It certainly is. Welcome back to the Sattler Files. And it is at my table time with the gourmet godfather, John Mayorana. Hi, Des. Welcome, John. How have you been? I've been good. Yeah. I've been good. I've been here, you know, eating and drinking, like uh, I'm sure, which I'm sure you have been uh, too. Probably a little too much, yes. A little yeah. too much. <laughs> it's never too much. Oh, yes. Isn't there always all room all for good food the and time, good yeah. wine? Yeah, and looking around and new things all the time. Mm. So many things opening and you, you've got to sort of stay in touch. You do have to stay in touch. I mean, there's really no excuse for going back to the same place over and over again yeah. when there are so many... Great new ones that you can yeah, be but, trying. You, know, you, you feel comfortable in your old places. I know. It's like a pair of old shoes, uh, isn't uh, it? Yeah. I've, I've been a little bit like that in the last few weeks. I've actually revisited some of my favourite because before that I was looking at new ones all the time and I can't say that I was always very satisfied with the new ones. True. So I like to go back to good, safe, comfortable territory. But yeah. All right. So where have you been? What? Well, I, I went and revisited Wildflower. I talked about Wildflower some time back and it's the new development uh, at, in Cathedral Avenue there. Uh, look, I was very impressed, as I told you, the first time I went. So I went back, had a look at it with some friends again. And the place is fantastic. This is fantastic. a fine dining restaurant. It, this is a fine dining. If you want to have a big night out, if it's someone's a birthday, birthday or yeah. something like that, something special, you've got wonderful views and this glass enclosed room at the top of the, the building there, the old treasury building, mm-hmm. looking down, right down towards Elizabeth Key and... These are views that will be never be interrupted because of the way the city is designed. Exactly. Okay, looking down over the, the park and everything. And fantastic. Uh, you can have a, a drink outside in, in an open area and then come inside and the, your views from all areas in the in the restaurant are fantastic. And uh, the food is top quality. The chef's doing a fantastic job. Well, that's good to creative. hear because quite often when you have a destination-type restaurant where it's sort of on a beach – or on the river, or has a view, you tend to lose something in translation, and That's quite right. often the food doesn't live up to it. Well, the food certainly does here, and everything that the chef uh, uh, does at this place is top class. You know, I've been impressed twice. My only criticism is that it is a top class restaurant, and you've heard me say this before. The the, the choice is restricted. I think a, cl- a restaurant like that should have on its offerings more than four entrees and more than four main courses. Oh, that, that's a bit of a narrow choice. It is a narrow choice because... What if didn't, you didn't like one of the four? Yeah, there's not very too many to choose from. Now, there, I don't think there was anything there that I wouldn't, wouldn't have been prepared to have tried. Right, given fair that. enough. But it does not allow the chef to offer everything. Like once you do a lamb dish and you do a fish dish and you do a beef dish and a vegetable dish, you know, and there's no more variation. Where's the game? Where's yeah. something interesting yeah. that you can put in? It is so. It na- isn't. Na- a spe- there's no special of the day. There's no no room no, for seasonal no, food. Well, that I'm you sure can that tell. They, they could have, uh, but it wasn't any on the night we went there. They have a uh, degustation, which is five course, but it's basically what they're offering in those four mixed up together. And we went to the degustation, and, and look, it was, it was top class. The food that that was given to us. One of the, the ladies is a pescatorian that was in the group and uh, they didn't batter an eyelid, came out with dishes that looked quite attractive in keeping mm-hmm. with everything else that was being offered. But, uh, yeah, t- top-class food, top-class flavours. I, I had a prawn dish which was just sensational, a really wonderful cross-section of flavours of four or five things in the dish and they all came together. And beautiful. what did it look like on the plate? I always yeah. want to know that. No, well, this is artistic sort of food. You know, we're at that end. It's not food for gulping down. It's food no. for looking at it for a little while and enjoying. A few micro herbs sprinkled <laughs> over things. Yeah, yeah, a few you... drops around <laughs> well, the plate. You yeah, know what? You know, yes, you know a the few story. drops. Yes. Uh, and you know, we do get a little bit bored with that. So it has to be done very well, and it was yeah. done well here. The, the 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 dish of the night was this prawn dish. It was a raw prawn. Uh, served with um, some uh, finger limes uh, that are all all the go and a few other things. In but everything just came together beautifully. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and uh, I was discussing it with another food oriented person in the group. And I said, if I had to make a criticism, and I, you know, me being who I am, I probably can criticize you. Can't help it. yourself. I, yeah, you can't. I, help. I, it's I not. Thought, it's not a criticism. It's a critique. Yeah. It's a different, uh, different thing. And I looked at it. I said. It was fantastic, unquestioned, but I thought that the prawn could have been sort of spruced up and made shiny in, like, <laughs> because the prawn was just there with the juices around naked, it. Naked, was it? It was a little bit, you know, a little bit... <laughs> 
cupboard, you know, to, to <laughs> save a little bit. Now, I've, I've seen dishes like that done overseas where they would just dip the prawn in into some gleamy mm. uh, comforting sauce and mm. just – that was probably the only criticism I could Well, that's make. not that's too bad for an entire night. Fantastic food. Uh, another, so like I said, what were the desserts like if you only got a choice of four entrees and main courses? And that, there were about three or four desserts on the list. But because we went to degustation, we had – what came. All of them. <laughs> and uh, no, not quite. And it was, um, yeah, look, it was a fine meal. And and I would gladly go back and I'd gladly recommend it. And I hope they get the act together and sort of go to about six and six uh, and mm. keep me happy. Keep with, you happy. Uh, I just think that a restaurant like that should should allow you to have choice. And there was no game as, okay. as such in, in the main So course. how did you rate it on our look, At My Table restaurant um, score? Uh, look, there, uh, you know that for me to give any restaurant 17 is uh, Ooh, I know. You know, man, way, way has out there. It has to be food I, I, of the I, gods, I, I would imagine. Yeah, I would, just about, just about. And this got close to 17, but I wouldn't give it quite 17. Uh, I've had a look at it twice and I've been between 16.7 and 16.9 all the it's time. pretty good. Yeah, it, it, it is <laughs> it a very must, good recipe. Apart from the naked prawn, I mean, it must be pretty and, good. And the variety and the, the width of dishes, I, I would say that, um, yeah, it would it'd be just into the 17s. Oh. But this is pretty sharp food, yeah. Okay. And you get an opportunity for a special night, especially someone else is going to pay for you. Yeah, well, this now, is th- true, This is yes. even better. <laughs> it is a little on the expensive side, but it is at the top end. Well, you would expect that. Yeah, and, you would expect yeah. that. It's a fine dining restaurant with views in the middle of the city. Yeah, fantastic. It, now, the service. Um, Major D was good. Just fa- fantastic. David Best is in charge of the floor there. And everything that was immaculate. Good. Uh, about, about the way they look after the bookings, the way things are handled. Uh, some of us uh, were a little bit earlier than others, and they handle everything beautifully without mm. any impose, without a making smooth you feel, operating uh, ship by uh, the uh, sound of it. Absolutely, yeah. Place, place to go to for a special night. Okay. So when Howard looking for a special place to take you, there's yes, I will record. suggest that one. <laughs> the yes. wildflower okay. in the in the, in the new city. building. Mm-hmm. Where else have you been? Well, at the other end of the spectrum. And yeah, we go from to, I know, but we go from fine to, dining to cheap and cheerful. Don't yeah, say the ridiculous. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's ridiculously good. This one. Uh, <laughs> what can else can I say? Uh, uh, you know my great love for yum cha. I know I'm you always, do. And I'm always You're, looking. For, you uh, for an Italian to love yum cha as much as you do, I find incongruous. But that's <laughs> the way it is. Oh, uh, look, it is. Uh, I, I just lo- love the concept of people showing up. I was brought up. By a mother who, oh, my mother when she her cooking, she loved to g- give taste things or something, mm. and I find that jam chow is the same. So, it is you know, lots of little tastes. She might be cooking a, a big meal, but she would say, "Here, try this to to me and guests or whatever, or try this mm. and try." And I and I love the idea of trying lots of little things along lots the way, lots of taste, where it, someone really shows you their skill with just with just mm-hmm. a little taste. So, what and, did you have? Where did you go? You went to the Silver Seas in Morley. Silver Seas in Morley. There's a couple of in Morley now that I've looked at. I'm trying trying to go work my way through all the ones around. There's, there's quite a few. There's a lot, uh, but uh, there are a lot, and, and a lot of them are, are ordinary. There's they tend to to be, look sloppy, and you know the way they operate and stuff is sort of not. In more of our Western style, then you know, the, the Chinese mm. find it comfortable, and so, a lot of Westerners would find it uncomfortable. But you know, when, when I first went to a Yum Chow thirty years ago, I didn't know where I'd got, got no. myself into. But you know, uh, crazily, moved. I think I had my very first Yum Chow in Chinatown in Sydney for some reason, yeah. and that was probably a lot longer than thirty years ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just saying, it's about thirty years uh, years ago that. I started going regularly, maybe yes. forty years now. Gosh, yeah. Yeah, time, yeah, think time slips away from it. Does us, it does slip away. What did you? Yeah, so but, when but, you're gonna you go to Yum Cha? What are your standout well, dishes? What are the dishes I, I look, you this judge? Are the things I, I always order that I think thing make a really good Yum Cha. The rice flour rolls. Yes. Now, the rice flour rolls. Now they are an art. They are an art to do properly, and and they're going to be done in such a way that the the uh, flour roll is sufficient thickness for you to be able to lift. Without it, without it without sticking the, and without, without breaking the or internal contents just disintegrating yeah, and losing right. it, uh, and at the same time, uh, thin enough for it to not be eating glug. So that's yeah. that fine balance of getting that right. I, that's always a good sign, and mm. it's the same with the prawn dumplings. I always choose prawn dumpling dish. 
and the prawn dumplings are the same. The quality of the prawns, yes, that, that can vary. Oh, and absolutely. It, and you, uh, some of the one, the better ones, have really good quality prawns, and the mm. dumpling f- uh, flour cover has to be thin mm. and not break. Yes. So this again. Is, once once again, it's it's that fine balance between being there and holding the contents. Uh, without breaking, mm. but uh, not biting through a slice of bread just about to get to the yeah. to the inter- interior. Um, then the squid tentacles. Are yeah, just I so always thought of them too. Yeah, they, they they are because they they can vary quite. Although oh. they always look the same, but they, they can, look the same. But, but they, they can go it. from being light and just beautiful and crispy, to really yeah. heavy and gluggy and, and rubber. Chewy, yeah, and very yeah, rubbery. Chew, yeah, with uh, too much. On the outside, and of course, that fine balance of getting a little bit of chili mm. and uh, stuff on them is important. So they they are good. I always have a fried noodle dish with um, with uh, some sprouts in it. Uh, that's I guess the Italian in me. I got, got to finish off with a bit of spaghetti. But that also, it gives you a little bit of bulk <laughs> in the meal does, because yeah. everything else is just a little taste of things, and you sort of need and something a bit more substantial. Does, it's very simple dish. Yet it does vary a lot between. Yeah, it sure can does. be very dry and tasteless in some places, and other places get it um, very right. So I always have that. Uh, in a little bit more adventurous mood, I like the chili and, and ginger um, tripe. Well, you do so like your tripe. I do like the tripe, yes. And, and tripe is, shows how well they cook and how patient they are because tripe, to be edible properly, it's got to be cooked long and slow. Mm. As we, as we know. As, and, as we um, well know. And uh, otherwise it's very, very gummy mm. and, and stuff. And uh, a, a very good tripe, it's a good dish to have. Um, beef tendons is another one of these long, slow dishes that uh, and they, the Chinese get some really wonderful flavours with this. And, mm. and I really like uh, my, my son's favourite dish, b- b- the beef tendons. He, he, lo- he loves going, a bit hard to pick up, I've got to say. They, they are hard to pick up. They're a bit slippery. Yeah. And um, my, and my finish, wife, uh, to finish off with something a little bit lighter, she loves steamed custard buns. Yes. So anywhere I'd go, I'd have those. I'd, we, we'd try other things and add on, but th- that'll be the core, That's the core. Of, of our group is, is sharing th- those. And if you want to do those dishes properly, that, then uh, and they do do them properly, then you, you've hit a place that's good. And Silver sees, sees I've got to say, did it a very good job. I'm, did you I'm, give them I'm, a right? Are going, you scoring them? Uh, the hard to score because they're it's not. Hard. I mean, it's, it's on a restaurant scale, on an eating you, scale. How, yeah, yeah, how do you compare it? That's it's right. almost impossible. They're, they're two different scales that I use, uh, but I, I didn't ch- uh, score this. I dropped in with uh, uh, my cousin actually the other day and t- to try this place. And I've got to tell you, we, we went in there and it's got that sort of film on the window so you can't see in, mm. but you can, they can see out once you're inside. Yeah. And and I looked at the window and it had all hand marks on it. I just about wanted to turn around and go. Oh. It looked it looked like, oh, that's going to be one of those dumpy little Chinese yes. uh, yum chocolate. Open the door, immaculately clean inside. Oh, I just didn't Beautiful. get to the windows that morning. Yeah, I, was, I was just about going to say, you can't remember to clean your windows. Go and clean your windows. <laughs> yeah, as well, because it's the first sign. It yeah? will, I would and say so. And with the reflecting uh, film on it, of course, it made it look worse. Mm. But, uh, yeah, look, uh, always a good sign, full of Chinese inside there. And a good service. Which is always a good sign. Yeah, it is, a, and a very good service, and very, very obliging people trying to please you. Often they just uh, slop around a little bit, uh, as they do in Hong Kong. You know, there's yeah. no, not great service when you go to really great yum chows. No, you know, no, no they just push the trolley yeah. <laughs> and so, mark your card. Yeah, that's, that's about right. it. Now, so, so new places to go, venues to try. Well, you know, I've been uh, counting the votes in for the mm-hmm. Gourmet Godfather Restaurant Awards and, you know, I'd put out uh, a suggestion of about 190 restaurants mm-hmm. and the number of new restaurants that have opened up that people have voted for that weren't even on my list really? is amazing. So I decided to make a list of ones that I really want to go and try. Okay. And in, I divided them in, in, into two lots, the ones that are new, virtually new kids on the block and that I haven't mentioned before, and the ones that, that scored so well consistently by different people that I thought, you know, I should get, and I, that, that I haven't tried. That you haven't that, tried that, yet. That, that I should go and have a try. So the new kids on the block, Bud Burst. This is an interesting one. It's, and it's also been mentioned in some uh, top restaurants to go and have a look at nationally. So right, it's, okay. And this is a very new one in Mount Hawthorne. 
It's uh, Gwinnell Leslie. Yeah, I don't know whether you know Gwinnell Leslie. Who used to be the ex- he's been around in a couple of places. Uh, he was with Friends when they first up oh, the Shepherd Friends. Group. Okay, uh, yeah. And, and now then I can he, place him. Mister Bouchon in uh, yes. Wembley. Well, this place in Mount Hawthorne, I've had a lot of really good comments about really? it. So Bud Burst is one that I haven't been to. Okay, that I, but that you want to go I want to. Want to go and have a look at Long Chim. Uh, this is the David Thompson place. We've talked about mm-hmm. this before. I still this haven't been the t- there, the and this is on my list. Beautiful of Thai food. Be- beautiful Thai food uh, to try. James Parker. This is one in just off uh, William Street in uh, Northbridge. Um, really good comments about this from friends of mine whose opinion I respect. Mm-hmm. So this is on a must-go-to uh, list for, for me. Dainty Dowager in Highgate. Mount, Sounds uh, like Mount something Lord. from Downton Abbey, doesn't yeah, it? It does, and yet it's a Chinese restaurant. <laughs> Isn't it's, that it's a weird yeah, thing? And, and it got votes consistently both in the Asian and in the Yum Chow and, and, and Good Eats, Interesting Eats. So mm-hmm. it's one uh, on my short list. My, both my children have been there and they really recommend it. So uh, um, must go and have Ma- a look at it. It's a must. Okay, yes. good. Odyssey. This is the new venture down in City Beach. Yes. Is that um, where um, – now I can't think just of – Just the next door Tom, version. Is it the, where to Tom – Galapagos. I was going to say, was it Tom Galapagos' yeah, old yeah, restaurant? Near there. Near right, there. Yeah, okay. Right. And they've built another building. I think it might be in the other building. Now, like I said, I haven't been there. I just comments about it and it showed up in the voting pattern, uh, interestingly. And Porky's, this is a place if you go into Gra- uh, Grand Promenade – Mm-hmm. In out my way, uh, in Bayswater, uh, right near the Maltham Railway Station on the corner, this yeah. used to be a pet food store or a pet store with aquariums and stuff like that. Okay. But converted into an American uh, barbecue pit, ah, genuine. So this uh, is the uh, the real American the barbecue. barbecue pit. Yeah, and I'm I've got to say I'm not big on this sort of food, but once again, you could be converted. You know, oh look, I, I, I like it, but it's still. <laughs> They tell tell me it's not licensed. You, let, you can bring in some good good uh, food. Yeah, they, they cook and smoke so many things, and if you get in early and get them, they're done. When it's finished, it's finished. Oh, okay. So yeah, friends of mine have been there. My son, who loves that sort of food, mm-hmm. he was right into it. So that's another one on my on your list. On my list, new kids on the block on okay. my list of places I want to go and see in the future. Okay. And what else is worth a try? Now, these are places that are, whose name I'm familiar with, but I've never eaten that. And the voting pattern suggested, and I've then since then done a bit of homework, that I should perhaps go and try them. Uh, the, the first one is Marumo, which is consistent voting from right through. Not good enough, perhaps, to make the last three in the in the, but it's consistent yeah, for me okay. not, not to know. I had it on my list, but I didn't expect it to get too many votes. Low key chow house. This is for people who who like to go out, have a meal, and not spend too much money. You're yeah. sort of, uh, which is most of us. Yeah, well, <laughs> well, well whichever no, one. No, it's one of those uh, you know midweek sort of things yeah, that you just say, oh, let's go have. It it's both voting is so strong that it, perhaps I should go and have a look at it. I okay. think because you know you can't eat it all of them. There's millions of. Them I know there are. And these are on my list as go. A Lady of Rowe. Now, I've heard some really good things about yeah, that place. I, I have too, and I, I, it's been remiss of me because Same I started hearing. Same people who own Bookla. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've heard things about it like you a long time ago, and I still haven't got around to, mm. to see it, and I really do want to go and see it. Strange company. I know nothing about this place. No, but the voting pa- uh, The voting pattern says uh, I've got to know. Not only did it. Where is it? Uh, in the city, uh, um, I believe, and I haven't even checked. But the, I'm just going by the votes, how it received votes from all over the mm-hmm. place. I really have to have it on. I did have it on my list of places I thought might get votes, but it's not a place that I've eaten at. And same with Emma's Dim Sum Cafe. Now, this Emma's Dim Sum Cafe didn't sort of ring to me. It uh, doesn't uh, really uh, have um, not, a romantic, uh, catchy this sort is not of the thing. The I'm going to go to. Emma's Dim Sum. I, I have to go. Is there an Emma? Yeah, apparently there is, and and they've opened up a, a second Emma somewhere else. Uh, Clarissa, no, Clarissa, who's manning the panel today, she's got a thumbs, put, got up, a thumbs so up. She's been there. Yeah. She likes it. Well, there, uh, we've there got, we go. We've got, got, got a vote there. there. <laughs> and for um, 
the 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 um, ribs and the burgers. There's a place called Ribs and Burgers, and that really got a good vote. Okay. There were others as well, but those are twelve. That's six on new ones and six of that have been around that I haven't eaten at that are on my short list. So down the weeks we might talk about uh, how yeah. these ones looked like, okay. presented themselves. So along with all that eating, what have you been drinking? Um, it's, it's an interesting time because um, if, if this is the time when they start releasing reds uh, that have from last year and they're starting to get uh, into the vintages of this year. So it's an interesting time to look at. So I thought I'd look at three different wines that have been released recently and try those. I've been a fan of the Tim Adams wines from Clear Valley and he makes a Pinot Gris, which is quite good, only about $20. That Goodness one's been me. Looking at, That's cheap uh, these uh, days. Uh, it's always amongst the top green Pinots uh, on the market that you can get. Uh, you know, you can't miss it as, as being a Pinot, yeah, sort of characteristics, the, the, the colour, slightly yellow, the uh, characteristics of the wine. Um, from the moment you open the bottle, you know it's going to be a, a Pinot Gris. And the pear and peach flavours on the and the aromas on the nose, and the citric sort of taste on the on the mouth, all good characteristic, good fruit in there, and the, the middle palate is great. And like I said, there's good uh, um, acidity right through through the citric, and it really cleans the palate of any richness that you get. It so it's really worth buying. I think. Yeah, I mean, that, is know. that something you'd put in your cellar, or do you think no, you no, it's, it's a drink now? Yeah, drink, drink that nice and. And fresh, uh, no, I wouldn't even hang hang around too long. Okay. Just a great drinking wine, uh, great with food. Uh, I always sort of like food. to know because I always like to keep track of what you've got in that cellar. <laughs> That's different. The cellar's different. The cellar's different, uh, isn't it? Uh, there are a couple that you could you could uh, look at for the cellar. Um, the uh, the second one I want to look at uh, is the Shadow to Book. They don't call themselves Shadow to Book anymore. They simplifying the name. Uh, Got less French and more Australian, just to bilk. Uh, and look, this is a place that's got a, a bit of a sentimental value to me. In 1972, oh. when I was driving, uh, were you uh, married then? I was married, and even I drove from Perth to uh, Sydney. You know, that's in 1600. Well, that was game of you. <laughs> it, was, it was very brave of us because the the 300 uh, miles hadn't been uh, uh, tarmacked yet, so no. it, was, it was it was on. On the rubble, but uh, God, that was, was a, that would have been a test of love and the relationship. Fantastic, we had a great time. But uh, on the way back, we uh, on the way there, we tried to get there as quickly as possible. Went through the centre. Mm. On the way back, we went through wine country. Back in seventy two, yes. I, I was a drunk in those days as well. <laughs> <laughs> you're not drunk. And, you're a connoisseur. Uh, uh, and we went to Shadow to Book, uh, the the one in South Australia. They make wine in South Australia and in Victoria. This one comes from the Western Victoria and the and the Gamby Lakes area, um, this one. And this is an area where they they copy the, the Rhone district of France, mm. those sort of variety. And this is what's known as a GSM, a mixture of Grenache, Shiraz and Mauverd mm. uh, grapes. Um, and this is the 2014 is the current release. $28 in, for this one. And I really think that it's, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fine wine of its style, you know. Um, I was always a fan in those days. Uh, I probably still have a few old bottles of Shadow to Book in my in my cellar. Uh, a fan of the, both the Cabernet from um, uh, South Australia and the Shiraz from Victoria that they were yeah. making back then. But this one's sort of got big berry fruits, plum characteristic, and a nice thick wine. Um, got great tannins and very spicy. Go wonderful with game or pot roast that you could be into. And we're just getting into that yeah, time of the year time, where we yeah. do want all those nice comfort foods, that, right. like a long, a long cooking and, yeah, and, and this slow is cooking. just the wine for it at twenty eight dollars. Yeah. It's fantastic. Pretty good to drink on its own too. It's really got such great flavours, and you know if you're just playing cards after dinner and you wanted a gla- another glass of red, you could that open would be this. Be the one. Could open this and be uh, be comfortable with it. Okay. Uh, really a good wine at the price. So that was going to South Australia and Victoria. I thought we'd better look at one from WA We've as well. We've got to go local. Yeah. We have to look local too. So I went to uh, have a look at the, the Castelli wines. They're located primarily in Mount Barker but have vineyards also in Franklin River. And their Shiraz is a mixture of grapes from both areas. Uh, great wine, uh, uh, this, the Castelli 
uh, children are running it, but the father has been a very successful businessman in the construction and poured quite a bit of money into this winery and is very interested. Lucky in, kids. Lucky kids. <laughs> yeah. uh, very interested in producing quality wines. Um, this is a quality wine. It's the, the Shiraz is typically you get the mulberry characteristics uh, from uh, the Franklin River area and you get the spiciness from the Mount Barker. Uh, Shiraz, you know, and mixing those two, you get a really complex mm. wine that's, um, you know, displaying the characteristic of both regions. Um, texture and oak are very well integrated, you know, and there's not, nothing wrong with this wine at all. It's got good, good, uh, tasty finish. And I'll be celebrating this wine for you about be? at least five years, oh, up okay. to 10 years. Yeah, really? Uh, it wouldn't, wouldn't be keeping much longer. Okay. I think this is a good one to put away at a nice, affordable price $28 it is a bottle to be able to put a wine and, and enjoy it in five to ten years. So, if so we're that's, still here. That, that's uh, <laughs> the wines. Of the, if we've got that passion in it, like you said, if we're still here, oh, enjoy we'll, it. We'll all still we'll be here. It. We'll still be here. What we won't be is here for the next couple of minutes. We're just going to take a quick ad break and then we'll be back. This, this is the Sattler Five. Devright Homes, when you're looking for attention to detail and a uniquely designed home to suit all your needs. At Devright Homes, we only build a limited number of homes per year, so we can truly focus on what you want out of a prestige home builder. We've continually won awards for excellence, with a record number of wins last year, and the proud winner of the Australian Townhouse Villa of the Year. While we love building homes to suit each client, we pride ourselves on designing homes that take into account the special safety needs of some of our clients. If you have a dream, we can make it come true. Talk to Jay Mangano and find out more about Devright Homes at www.devright.com.au. You need banking services of any type. Secure Force Protective Services run a cash and transit service here in Perth. For as little as $25, why risk your employees travelling to the bank when Secure Force can do it for you? Give us a call at 9440-5011. You only ever want the best for your family, and no one understands this better than the caring ladies at Marina Perslow & Associates. That's why we offer Australia's leading prepaid funeral plan. It means your family won't be left with the added strain of organising your funeral, and everything will be taken care of, all the little details. Your family will have the support they need with a woman's touch and gentle understanding. So leave them with loving memories, and leave the rest to us. Visit marinaperslowfunerals.com.au or phone 9388-1623. I'm John Hughes. If you want a hassle-free, very enjoyable and happy experience when buying your next vehicle, come to me in Victoria Park. I personally train all my salespeople to be non-pushy, friendly and professional and we always strive to provide first class before and after sales service to all of my customers. So choose your dealer before you choose your car that's John Hughes in Victoria Park, your car buying destination. DL6061. This is the Sattler Files. Welcome back to the Sattler Files. We're talking at my table with John Mayorana, and now we're going to talk about the product of the week. We always like to look at seasonal foods. I'd like to have a look at seasonal food yeah. and eat some and see what happens and what's going on. And one that, that for me is a highlight, really. Uh, Probably my favourite fruit of all is persimmons. But they have to be persimmons, not Fuji fruits. Not They're, Fuji. Nothing no. wrong with the, Fuji fruit. You want the real, the original and the best. Talk, that's right. The, and these are very, very challenging. I think all things that are really great have to be challenging as well. You know, otherwise, we'd have them all the time. Would be so what is it you like about them? Oh, look, just their flavour. They're, te- they're sensual. The they're, they're, they're texture, the contrast of a really Aren't great persimmon. Aren't they supposed persimmon. to be the fit- forbidden fruit? Well, I don't know whether the, this was the forbidden fruit or not. Who would know? I mean, I, 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 pomegranates, I apples, who knows what it was, what she was handing <laughs> eat, Adam. Well, well, that's right. But you know, persimmon is just the great one. There are several varieties in the you know, it's, it's a deciduous tree and ball, uh, drops a Do lot of leaves. Do you have one in your backyard? I have one in my I backyard. I pruned it today. You did? Is this pruning, pruning time? time? Yes, okay. uh, because mine uh, f- fruits early. But they're just coming on to, if you've got an, them, they'd be further down south. It's a little bit warm in Perth. You need to go a little bit further south to get some really good cropping, mm-hmm. uh, a bit cooler weather. And uh, 
Um, because my, they're making a mess, I thought I'd, I'd take the mine today. <laughs> uh, but they only just started coming in full, full flow in the last week or so. They've, they've been some around for about three weeks. They'll be around for about another couple of weeks, and then that'll be it. The Fuji so fruit, what could them? do? How do you eat them? Uh, you, um, you have to wait for them. To, you have to understand them first. Can I go back a step before I yeah, answer that? Yeah, of course you can. Uh, there's two types. There's the astringent ones and the non-astringents. Uh, the astringent one can be v- really make you pucker up uh, <laughs> when you. I don't know if you've ever bitten into an astringent. Um, well, I suppose it'd be like sucking on a lemon, wouldn't it? It'll, probably worse. Probably, probably worse. worse yeah. Really? Yeah, and this is why I said they are challenging fruit. But um, they're great to look at when they're nice and ripe. And for the astringent ones, you have to ri- wait till they're really, really ripe before you eat them. They're going to be just about sloppy. The non-astringent ones, they can be a little bit firmer and you get away with, with it as well. So these are, you, you have to understand that first. So to be safe, you need to eat these ripe. And when you say, how do you eat them? Well, they've got a stalk at the top. You break the stalk off and you should just break them in half. They're so ripe. And what, what the great characteristics are is that they're very sloppy and juicy, but they have a little central core, which is just chewy, just can bite, just bite. When you've got it to that stage, you've got the perfect persimmon. Right. And the, the very best for me, best quality, are the hachi, hachias, they call the hachias. Mm-hmm. And these are tall and ha- have a pronounced point on, on the top uh, of them, and they usually segment into five sections, five divisions. Um, fantastic uh, fruit, w- wonderful to eat. And the other ones are the fuyu. And the Giro, both of these are uh, non-astringent and just wait till they soft. I've, I've got a case of uh, Hachias on, uh, on the weekend for function I, I did at home yesterday and they were just sensational. I made uh, um, a sauce uh, with Grand Manier uh, okay. through it and right. put, uh, got the little segments and threw that over the top and they were just, it was just sensational and, uh, part of, of the lunch. Um, the non-astringent varieties are the nightingale and the Daida Maru. Um, and once again, these are, uh, the nightingale especially is fantastic to eat as long as you get them, just get them and let them ripen at home. Mm-hmm. If they're firm, don't even, don't even think about eating them. Uh, is there a trick? Is yeah, there, there is a, trick a trick to ripening yes. them? Yes, what they need is ethylene to ripen quickly, so you put them next to your bananas. Or your bananas do it every time. Yeah, that, I always put a, the avo- If I get a hard avocado, I always put it in with bananas, right, and so, it speeds it yeah, along. That, that's the, the way you can get them to ripen very quickly. You can, you can make, uh, look, I've made souffles with them by getting the, f- the really sloppy fruit and mashing it up and making it into a souffle. I've made ice, ice creams with them. I've just you name it, I've tried to do oh. it. I made a, uh, like a cake with, with, on the basis of having the uh, like persimmon. An apple, like an apple cake. Mm, yeah. Yeah. With, yeah. Absolutely. They look wonderful fruit and just wonderful to, to eat. It is <laughs> so rewarding. I have fans who are equally as bad as I do. We, 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 <laughs> like, we like to eat them together. Slop well, you've got all a over. couple, you've got a good, you know, you've got from April to May to enjoy them yes, while they're in season. Well, they're only in season for a very, very short time. And it's one of those defining uh, products of the season. Like the, when, when it is autumn. You know it's you autumn. You know autumn because... If they're on the uh, shelves, it's, it's autumn. not all early autumn. It's mid to late autumn. Then they, they really like artichokes. It's a defi- defined season. Very absolutely. defined. And yeah. it's much too short for my life. Yeah, absolutely. But much I think if it was much longer the season. Do you think we'd get sick of them? I don't think might, so. I th- love th- them. They'd be like everything else after a while if you, if you always could eat Maybe them. Maybe if you could I think, eat them all the time. I think Maybe. having them. That, it's like asparagus. You, know, you can get asparagus all the time, but only a few months of the year they're really good. The re- yeah, <laughs> so, the real thing. And, and you get sort of bored with them, you know. Restaurants. What would they do if they didn't have asparagus? asparagus in a I have pan? no idea. How would they dress the plate? You know, I have no idea. The asparagus everywhere. They need everywhere. to add something green and vertical. That's what they do. That's, that's it. It yeah. doesn't take too much effort. Chop it off. Don't even trim them. Just chop the edge off. <laughs> that's what they do. They yeah. don't trim them. They just chop. Yeah. I think we've gone through it all today. We've um, looked at some good eats. We've looked at our restaurant competition yeah. or our restaurant ratings rather than competition. And what's come out of them, yeah. And what's coming out of them. Um, we will get back into a really solid look next week at the at results, the re- at the results of the, the Gourmet, the results, yeah. Gourmet Godfather at my table awards. That's the one.
John, thank you so much for joining me. John Mayrana, the gourmet godfather. We'll be back shortly with more on the Sattler Files. This- 